Welcome to Crusade Conversations, an interview series and resource for artists, curators, collectors, and people who care about the beautiful things in their world. I'm Jennifer Schwartz, your host and number one crusader for art. I own a fine art photography gallery in Atlanta, the Jennifer Schwartz Gallery, and an online photo project called The Ten. Crusade Conversations is an initiative of the Crusade for Collecting, a project born out of my passion for supporting art and artists. The Crusade's mission is to cultivate a new crop of art lovers, patrons, and collectors by encouraging people to engage with art in exciting and innovative ways. Today, I am welcoming Chris Appleton, who is the co-founder and executive director of Wonder Root, which uh, has a really concise yet wordy description, if, if that could be possible. And he's going to tell you that because <laughs> I couldn't get it all down. Tell us about Wonder Root, Chris Appleton. Yeah, thank you very much for having me, Jennifer. Um, Wonder Root is a nonprofit arts organization with a mission to unite artists and community to inspire positive social change. Um, based here in Atlanta and work uh, exclusively in the Atlanta region. We started the organization um, in 2004, and we were thinking uh, very much so early on. Um, as young artists about how to both support artists to have successful professional careers in Atlanta, as well as affect issues of social justice, environmental justice, health, and youth development through the arts. So our um, sort of big picture vision is using the arts to transform the city of Atlanta. Now, are you an artist yourself or were, were you? Do you have a background in arts creation and your business partner I mean it's I know that you personally have a big um, interest in the social justice and other types of environmental issues and things like that but where does the where does that meet the art yeah uh, I come to the arts with a, a creative writing background I have a, a degree in fiction writing um, and the other two guys Alex West and Whit Wisebram that started it with me uh, Alex um, studied uh, both film and programming at Georgia Tech. He's a computer guy, and Witt studied music um, up in uh, Massachusetts. And you all knew each other from growing up in Atlanta? We did. All three of us grew up here, and then right out, right out of high school, 18, 19 years old, um, which was back in 2002, started talking about what would eventually become Wonder Root. And why did you, did you feel there was a, I know that now Wonder Root, as it currently exists, does just beyond beyond what I even consider imaginable for the Atlanta arts community. But what, at that time, did you feel like there was a void? I mean, there are a lot of arts organizations here. And how did you feel like, what niche did you feel like, or do you feel like currently Wonder Root fits into or fills? Yeah, we, early on, we um, wanted to, and still today, um, with a little bit broader scope, but Early on, we wanted to provide opportunities for artists and for communities that otherwise would not have access, and, and we thought largely that that was about economic inaccessibility, um, and, it, and it is. I mean, we, um, not really through a lot of empirical research, but through kind of anecdotal dialogue um, and just listening to the people that were around us, People were saying, I can't afford studio space. I can't sell my artwork. I don't know how to get gallery representation. I can't afford art school. I can't, you know, pay for darkroom space, whatever these, you know, things are that, that, that um, Wonder Root um, is trying to plug the gaps in. People just weren't able to, to afford the pursuit of a career in the arts, um, Pursuing the arts as a professional career is a very privileged pursuit. It is expensive as hell to do that. And, um, and so we were, um, were and still are, you know, trying to provide opportunities that, to people that otherwise would not have them. So tell me a little bit more concretely. Wonder Root has a facility in Reynoldstown in Atlanta. And what, at that location, what are the things that are offered? And how does someone... Um, be able to, how can you participate? So the Wonder Root Community Arts Center, which is based in Reynoldstown, we opened uh, almost five years ago, the first of 2008, houses a recording studio, dark room, digital media lab, 
ceramic studio, screen printing studio, a small gallery space, classroom space, and a performance space. And, um, and that is about... community garden. And a community garden, yes. Although we, um, we don't really think of ourselves as being in the community garden business. <laughs> we just happen to have a vacant lot next to our building <laughs> where we operate a community garden. Um, but the way uh, people get access to the facilities um, and the resources at the Arts Center is by uh, getting a membership. And memberships are $60 a year for an individual artist, um, it's free for anyone under 18, and then we have, you know, reduced sort of rates for families, businesses, nonprofits, uh, things like that. And so essentially what happens is people pay $60 a year, you know, a, a 28-year-old artist just getting out of art school who has overnight lost access to Absolutely. all the resources that, that you have at school, whether it's at SCAD or or state or Kennesaw or Emory or wherever, you know, people move into Atlanta as well. Um, They get unlimited access on a first come first serve basis to all those studio spaces, as well as all the education programs that we do. And every month we have classes and workshops and in the disciplines that the studios support. So we'll have, you know, final cut pro video editing classes, or we'll have screen printing classes, or we have um, ceramics classes, so on and so forth. But you also do um, a lot of bigger community programs. Um, so I know about a few, probably more than a few. But um, And what I think is really striking about Wonderoot and what I hear a lot of other organizations in the city say is I don't know how Wonderoot does it, but they just seem to collaborate with everyone. And... Um, I mean, it seems to be that that is a huge part of Wonder Root's kind of personality in the city is that it's really inclusive and there's not a, a competitive angle there. It's a, you know, more is more, which I am a big fan of. But tell you do things at the high, you have a film series. I mean, it's just like everywhere you turn, there's something totally amazing happening. Yeah, so, you know, over time, of course, we learn that there are all of these different uh, resources and opportunities that artists need to be able to make that make a living and to have a, a true shot at a, at a career. And I'm not even talking about the sort of social change, social justice side of it yet. Um, but Wonderroot recognizes that we don't have a... 400 seat theater like plaza does or you know the kind of you know incredible amazing reputation and facilities that the high museum does or the kind of expertise about legal issues that uh artists need to consider and so we feel like we represent this um base of artists that's that's pretty large and you know ranges from i mean we serve somebody every week from age five to 75. I mean, there's no age discrimination. How many members do you have? We have about 200 active members at any given time. Um, and so, so what ends up happening is, you know, as a, as we are trying to respond to the community need, the artist community need, we say, well, who can we connect to within the community? What other organizations or institutions that have the resources, know-how expertise, um, that these, that these artists can benefit from. So in terms of um, what all kinds of programs we do outside of the art center, because the art center is only about half of what we do, and that's where the production facilities are. We do gallery shows there. We do music shows there. We do literary events there. Um, But we also publish a literary magazine called Loose Change. We have uh, film series. It's called Wonder Roots Generally Local, Mostly Independent Film Series. It happens every quarter at, at Plaza Theater. And then we do a best of the year screening at the High Museum. We do external exhibitions at both traditional and non traditional spaces throughout the city. We do public art programming. Uh, we do a great deal of, of professional and career development programming for artists. And when we talk about artists, we're talking about artists of all disciplines. I mean, from visual, literary, film, um, digital arts, dance, theater. You know, we, we um, want to support artists of all mediums. That said, we very much have a focus, I think, in the visual 
and in music. Um, but we were engaging other artists as well. Um, and so part of the collaboration partnership piece um, has emerged out of a desire to be advocates, both in deliberate and um, accidental ways. So uh, change happens when people of disparate community and experience come together and build um, consensus around values. And so we're trying to bring those people together. But I think it's interesting. We talked about this for a second before we officially started taping. But um, in the last, literally in the last two days, I have uh, met people who have an idea for something that seems, it's such a huge idea and not, um, and not unique. And so instead of, so it's just at this uh, foundation center, learn how to fundraise for art. And someone was saying that they wanted to do a project and I and raise money to build a building and do all of this stuff. And um, it seems like I'm not sure what the motivation is to make something so difficult when you can be a lot more effective by not reinventing the wheel and collaborating with someone who's already um, has an in that way and has a venue and has um, an audience and where you can bring your audience to their audience and benefit both. But um, someone else was telling me about a fundraiser that they do every year that makes a million dollars. and But this year they want it to be more of this or more. I'm like, why? You're making a million dollars. You know, it's, it's unbelievable. And, you know, why try to make it? I don't know. There seems to be some sort of, I don't know if it's a personal validation thing or where people are. There's so much out there. And it's frustrating to me to see so many different organizations and people working independently and overlapping goals where they could, there's so much um, synergy and they could benefit from each other's expertise as opposed to, you know, having cross purposes. Yeah, well, you know, I I certainly don't want to discourage anyone from from innovating and being an entrepreneur and starting their own thing. I mean, had someone told me 10 years ago at, you know, 19 years old when we were starting this thing, no, you should just go link up with, you know, and right. rattled off some organization, which there were people that were doing things in the, in the same realm as Wonder Root, but not with the same model, not the same philosophies, not the same values. Um, and so, you know, I would have been like, what are you talking about? There's no way I'm doing that. So I, I don't want to discourage it. But I think that um, what happens is people think nobody's ever thought of this before. People think, well, they're already doing this. Why do they, why do they need my help? If I do it as well, we can reach more people. Um, people want to make a living doing the things that they're passionate about, which is – so I mean I do too, and that's a right. that's a um, honorable honorable pursuit. And so, when you think about linking up with others, and um, let's say had Wonder Root, you know, said let's just do these programs through iDrum. iDrum was was you know very vibrant and vital organization to Atlanta back in two thousand and four, and and they were helpful and instrumental in, in us getting started. Um, had somebody said go do your programs through iDrum. There would have been no chance at, at me and Alex and Wit for this to be what we your vision our, our vision and what we did for a living and so you know it it I think there are um, people that have these amazing programmatic ideas that are that are super super strong at delivering programs and then there are people that have these sort of visionary innovative um, infrastructural Right, you know skills right. and and to be honest i think that i and i at wonder root am the latter and that's why we've gone and hired people that you know like quadrilla and maggie that do which is our program manager and our creative director that do this great work in in program design and implementation absolutely and so let's talk about a program that i'm really excited about that's coming up the imaginary million um i absolutely love we are disappointed idea. that you did not submit 
We discussed this. <laughs> I couldn't decide. I couldn't decide. I would like to participate as a guest. I would like to watch other people get art. You know? Cool. So tell me. Tell us. I know about it. Tell All right. us. The Imaginary Million is, um, it is an art auction for artists. Um, we sort of adopted and, and modified three or four different models of projects that w people were doing um, in New York and Houston and Montreal. There's one thing online that's pretty neat. Uh, and, and we're thinking about how often it is that artists cannot afford to buy artwork, that it's rare that an artist makes it to a stage in their career where they can truly afford to purchase the work of their peers. So in an effort to, A, empower artists as collectors, and B, elevate a conversation about the role collectors pay with, play within the local arts economy, we've created this thing called the Imaginary Million, and it's, it's a partnership between Wonderoot, Mocha GA, and the Zuckerman Museum, which is a new museum at Kennesaw State University. We're doing it for Elevate, which is the downtown arts, uh, you know, 10-day um, city of Atlanta downtown uh, public art initiative. And uh, essentially what will happen at 200 Peachtree next Wednesday, October 24th at 7 p.m., there will be an art auction with work from 100 artists that will only be auctioned off to the participating artists, and the artist will be buying the work with, a, an, with an imaginary currency. Everybody has the same $10,000 in imaginary currency that we've like hand printed and all this sort of stuff. I'm gonna give them a big stack of bills. It's gonna be pretty sweet. It's gonna be so, um, such an odd feeling for an artist to hold a stack of bills. Right. <laughs> That's gonna be worth the whole thing. Yep. So to participate, an artist had to submit a piece of original work and you selected 100 pieces. And those artists get to come to the event, get a stack of fake cash, and bid on other artists' work. So you give a piece, and you get a piece. Or two. Or two. Right. Um, but yeah, so, so we had a, you know open call for about a month for artists to, to enter work. And we had about 370 images that we chose from. Wow. Um, See, I would have submitted, and you wouldn't have chosen mine, and I would have been so embarrassed. Right. See, I can't, I can't take the rejection that artists <laughs> deal with daily. You guys are so brave. So, um, but then it's not, the event is also open to the public. People Absolutely. can attend I mean, we, and we watch this, right? So much we hope that, that a thousand people come to the event. I mean, it is free and open to the public. Uh, it will be a great time. There's, you know, a bar. There's, there's uh, hors d'oeuvres. It's a big art party, right? So, yeah, we hope the, the public comes out and learns about all these artists. Right. Um, I want to say a little bit about who the kind of artists that are participating. Yeah, are in they moment. all local? All are. Um, all have some tie to Atlanta. Okay. So, because so that was a requirement? That was a requirement mm -hmm. because you have to be there, right? Like you right. have to be present to bid on the work. We're not allowing any proxy bidders or anything like right. that. But it's really neat because, you know, sort of a uh, sub uh, purpose of it was to put artists that are – well into an established career, as well as artists that are just beginning their careers, you know, maybe in college, out of college, to put them all in the same room to, one, give them the opportunity to, to get the work of, you know, one another. Because, uh, you know, this bartering and this trading among artists happens, but it only happens in your peer group. So it only happens with the people that you Absolutely. know and the friends that you know. Absolutely. So a, so a uh, you know, Nancy Floyd, who's a well-established photographer, isn't necessarily going to know about um, Jeff Wolk, who's an emerging photographer, and or and, even different mediums or different medium, absolutely. Oh. And so we want to we want to put them in the in the same room together so that they can learn about each other. And then it's also going to be really really interesting, just a sort of psychological experiment of do people just go after the work that they think has a has a greater monetary value because the artist is, you know, right. the named artist, et cetera, or do you just go after what you love? And there, you know, with a hundred people in the room, there's of course going to be uh, a little bit of both. It's so exciting. And then as a partic as someone who's just coming to the event, you can uh, see work that you might like and be able to 
meet that artist even because they're going to all be there. Yeah, meet the artist. Uh, we'll have all the artist's contact information. That's um, great. We've printed uh, a thousand exhibition catalogs. And so, oh, that's amazing. you know, there's a 28-page booklet where you can learn about you know, learn about the art and the artist and all that kind of stuff. And, and the take great it home dedication with you. in the back. Yeah. What about, um, okay, so that is an amazing program for collecting, which I am obsessed with. And then also to talk about collecting, you started this new program called Wondership. And so those two things coming really close together is this kind of, have you always had a focus on collecting? Is this sort of a newer arts audience building thing have i been influential in your thinking somehow we can definitely give you most of the credit that would be that would be awesome that'd be great yeah we um i I don't think that we were i mean i know that eight years ago when we started it we were really thinking about collecting and to go back to something i was saying earlier is this is you know wonder root being a community-driven organization it's it's not so much our agenda it's you know, if there is this critical mass of people that continue to come to us and continue and continue to talk about some gap that exists. That's what I think is so amazing. Wonder it seems to be the most like nimble organization. I mean, it seems like someone comes to you with an idea and you are you have the infrastructure or some there's a way that you're able to make it work if it fits what you're what you're artists want I mean people are saying we want you know an outlet for film whatever you can create this program it just seems like there's a lot of flexibility and a great um it's a very responsive to the community and to the needs yeah we are very responsive and and we're able to do that because of our model uh we're able to do that because we are surrounded by just a tremendous amount of incredible individuals that are tireless and smart and hardworking that uh, believe in our mission and which is to make Atlanta a better place through the arts. Uh, So that's not, you know, that's not a hard thing to sell. And so we're just surrounded by all these people that are willing to, to work, you know, not so much on our behalf, but on behalf of the arts community, on behalf of these communities that we seek to serve. Um, So. Wondership. Wondership is, um, Wondership is a program that sort of serves a dual purpose for us. It is both a uh, intended to cultivate collectors, not for Wonder Root. Wonder Root's not a, you know, collecting institution. We're not trying to, we're not doing that that part of it for ourselves. Um, and then the other part is for it to be uh, sort of revenue generating for Wonder Root. We, um, there's a there's a certain segment of the community in Atlanta. It's sort of those like young professionals that we don't necessarily um, ha- in the past have not necessarily had the right um, programs to engage with. The art center is not the kind of place where a 32 year old lawyer is going to come when she gets off work, or a 41 year old accountant is going to come on a Saturday night to see a show. That's, that's not the kind of space that the art center is. And so we wanted to create, um, some initiatives that would engage this audience that, you know, is, you know, these people, the 31 year old lawyer or the 32 year old lawyer and the 41 year old accountant say, I want to get involved with Wonder Root. And so we just have to figure out the right way to, to get them involved. So we've started this thing, Wondership and the way that it works is it's membership based and there are a limited number of, of memberships available for the first year. And we've just, we just opened it up last month and memberships are $400 a year, $750 a year for a couple and it, it gets you access to um, four exclusive Wondership events a year. And, the, and we do one a quarter. And the events are either private tours of private visits um, of, of private collections or private visits to artist studios. So the, the event we did last month at Lucinda Bunnan's home, you know, and Lucinda's, you know, pretty much just like the best thing in person in the world. Um, you know, Lucinda has this amazing house in, in Buckhead with more art than you've ever seen in your life outside it's like of it. practically hanging on the ceilings. I mean, I mean it's, it's like every square inch of wall space. It's amazing. It's like hanging on the back of the toilet. Right. I mean, it's like <laughs> everywhere. 
and uh, just floor to ceiling and she just buys what she loves and so it was a it was a nice place to do this first event because as we try to break down barriers to collecting um, you want to make it accessible and you want to make it seem like we can you know I can walk into a place and I like that whether it's 20 cents or 20 you know two thousand dollars I'm just gonna buy it and throw it up on the wall I mean she has um, the whole uh, Brown sisters collection the Nicholas one of Nixon. one of three full collections right. in the world and the only one that is not in a museum i know so i just kind of stand and drool over that but she also has art from completely unknown um a lot of local artists she's really a big um supporter of local artists in atlanta but um one thing that i think is so there are some other young collecting groups in atlanta um the high museum has a uh, Circle, Circle, Circle Salon. Salon, and the Contemporary has Young and the Restless, or it's called something like Young and That's the Restless. That's correct. Oh, it is, it actually. Is. Um, Mary Stanley has the the Young Collect, whatever. <laughs> They're all called Young Collectors, something, something. So what I think is... We don't have the word Young in there, because if you're old, we want you to. Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, that doesn't apply to me, of course, but... If you, um, how do you think, how do you plan to set this group apart from the others? What I've found, because I have been interested in these groups and um, and have participated um, to some extent in all of them, and what seems to happen um, is that people get really, um, they become members, they get excited, they tour these collections, they enjoy going to these arts events, but they don't actually take the next step and start purchasing art themselves. Um, What I saw a lot in Mary Stanley's group, for instance, is that that would happen, that people are really enjoying learning and um, touring these collections, but that next step of actually becoming young collectors isn't happening. And um, I mean, I certainly have ideas about that. I think that sometimes it's almost like, um, like going into a gallery, just having this idea that the work in there is out of your reach um, financially, or that despite um, getting this, you know, bits of education and exposure, that you're still not Um, comfortable one-on-one to make that. It's very easy or a lot easier in a group to enjoy an arts experience and have opinions about work, but then to take that next step and on your own walk into a gallery and look at work and buy something. I think there's a disconnect there between, you know, the group social element around art and then as an individual person taking the next step and becoming a collector yourself. Absolutely. I mean, I think that 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 is... uh a large reason that separating the the social versus the actual investment in it mm-hmm. is the financial investment is huge and and largely a reason that every other gallery in town is closing their doors right now um, because it's not that people don't show up to gallery openings. I mean, they're the, people are there, right? It's a totally. you know, it's a happening place. It's just that people aren't free wine. People, uh, people are not aren't spending the money, and so there there are a couple of things that. You know, we'll see, right? This is, isn't certainly isn't a tried and true model for us. It's it's uh, brand new, but there are a couple of things that I have in mind to address that. One, um, actually, per your suggestion, giving these people private consultations with gallerists, curators, people that um, can maybe hold their hands as they as they go through, right? You like you need that buddy to go to the gym with you to Absolutely. to make it happen, and so. Um, so the members of Wondership, in addition to getting to come to these events, will also have the opportunity at no, no other cost to have that private consultation. So mm-hmm. that's one thing. And then the other is giving people new ways to buy art beyond walking into a gallery. Totally. It's intimidating where you don't, are they going to, you know, like my mom says, are they going to ask me what I think about the work, you know, and like, do I have to explain what it means and the meaning of it and all that sort of stuff? Um, so... So you've got to give. Isn't that funny that people think that? Yes, it's not true. We should say that. It's, it's not, not true, true That's because, right. I mean, we're standing there saying, like, can I tell you about the work? Yeah. You know? Or, or I might say, 
what does that mean? Right, right. <laughs> I don't understand that. Right, why, why is this hanging here? So, um, so there's another program that actually I don't think you know about that we are, um, we're going to launch next month that is going to be this sort of different way of buying art. Um, there are some, is it a secret? It's I'm, I'm, t- I'm, t- I'm, this is like an exclusive. This is the, the <laughs> am I breaking some news? Oh, I'm really excited. Well, you said only your mom was listening. So. You said your mom would listen too. Okay. So now they're so, both going to know about it. All four of us. And I've already consulted my mother on the idea. Um, <laughs> all right, my mom's going to be the only new, but she's going to be thrilled. Go on. So, so, um, there are three or four other other organizations doing this across the country, um, Chicago, Philadelphia, and uh, somewhere in Michigan. Um, maybe, there, maybe there are a couple others. Um, but if you're familiar with a CSA, uh, which stands for Community Supported Agriculture, it's a very popular practice over the last six or seven years amongst the uh, local foods, urban farming, urban agriculture movement. And the way that a CSA works is at the beginning of a growing season, a farmer of a small farm sells shares to the farm and the customer gets X weight. I mean, it's typically done by weight, X weight of whatever is harvested in a discrete amount of time. So typically once a week, you show up to the farm, they give you their basket, they give you your basket and you bought a a share and they're like, they're like, get 12 pounds worth of food. You choose oh, it's, nice. it's what we harvested t- this morning. You get whatever you want. Or sometimes they've packaged it for you before mm-hmm. before you pick it out. So, is this uh, going to be a CSA for art? That's exactly I'm what getting it is. so excited. Yeah, it's pretty great. So, um so it's a and it's been a very very successful business model for these small I'm farms so because excited. they have the investment from the customer before, you know, to so that they can buy the seeds so that they can pay for what it costs to produce that work before they have to produce that food before they have to uh, produce it. So we're going to do a CSA for the arts. And so it's going to stand for community supported art, not so community supported agriculture. And that's beautiful. And essentially our model will be, you know, when we're, we, uh, we're going to announce it next month. So we have a little bit of some fine tuning to do, but you know, for three or $400, A customer, we're going to have 50 shares available, and a customer is going to be able to buy a share, and in return, they're going to get, over the course of the year, nine original pieces of art from local Atlanta artists. That's so awesome. So the artists get paid in advance for making the work, which is... We write a check to the artist for $1,000 before they ever produce any work. We'll largely be working with photographers and printmakers because we'll have to make editions of 50. Right. And, um, oh my gosh, I'm so excited. And so it's this, so you get to go to people, you know, to the one, to the wondership members or to other people in the community and say, you don't have to walk into that gallery and be intimidated. Here's a box that's beautifully packaged and all this sort of stuff. Here's a box that has three pieces of art in it by Atlanta area artists. And you get nine, you get nine pieces of art over the course of the year. And if you don't like one of them, you give it to your brother or something. I mean, and it's it, it's extremely affordable, right? And you you it, it and is, you you can feel good that you're supporting a local artist and living. And you're getting work to hang on your wall, and uh, you, you know, and uh, it's that it's that to me. It feels like that in between. I mean, I, you know, people that I don't want to exclude or say serious collectors don't want to participate in this because we very much hope that they do. We you know we're not gonna we're not gonna exclude them, but we think it's largely going to be those people that haven't started buying art yet and need some mm-hmm. sort of new model gimmick, something like that to, to begin to engage. I love it. I love it. Great. Well, for three ninety nine ninety nine. Hey, I'm in. I'm taking the first, the first share, Great. maybe two. No, that'd be greedy. So the other thing I was thinking, um, someone mentioned recently all I do is read about this stuff so it just kind of floats around in my head but some sort of like art loan program where I don't know you know gallery owners around town could have that were um, wanted to be affiliated with Wondership in this program so it would only be for the Wondership members as another benefit 
but you can select from let's say a certain number i don't know how many wondership how many wondership memberships ship ships are available you said it's limited we have it's limited we have uh how many nine, what's the maximum we have, we have nine members right now and then what is the maximum five zero okay so if you had 50 members and 50 pieces of art and that local gallery owners would put up as a you know as part of this loan program mm -hmm. and you could select you could look through a catalog or online of these different pieces and select something and be able to have it hanging in your home for a certain amount of time and then kind of with the idea that some of these works would eventually get, get purchased, purchased that if i have something you, hanging on my wall for, for and you two fall months, in love with it I'm excited about it it looks good and it's like I'm going to buy that. Or if not, when I return it to White Space Gallery, exactly. there's other work on the totally. wall. And it's like, you know, I, I got to figure out what to put on that blank wall where there was something hanging for the last two right. months. I think that That's people, a pretty cool concept. I think people see work sometimes. And when you're, um, you know, so much of it is psychological. And when you first start to think about buying art, um, it's the reason that I don't tend to sell a lot of work at openings because the people that I am really cultivating are new to buying art and they maybe have never bought art before or just starting to. And when you're in that stage, it's not an art isn't an impulse buy. You know, you're not confident in your taste yet and you're not sure that what you like today you're going to like in even six months. And so having this opportunity to live with something for a while without any commitment and, and seeing how you feel about it and seeing if that, you know, every time you walk in that room, if it's making a difference somehow, you know, and maybe it is and maybe it isn't, but, you know, you can trade it out for something else. And so it's also giving the artist exposure, whether the work eventually gets purchased by that person or the third person that has taken it out. On Absolutely. Loan. It's great. Thanks. I think it's a smart idea. Yeah. I love collecting ideas. The most fun. So in the last, you know, moments... In the last moments of our program, <laughs> do you have anything else you'd like to talk about? There's so much. Um, That's why we have epic coffees. Yeah. Um, I don't know. What do you th What do you think folks want to know about Wonder Root? For me, I think the name is the coolest part because you're able to name all of your programs these awesome things like <laughs> Wonder Glow and Wondership and... We um, we have a little stray cat that hangs around the outside of our building, and and of course people named it Wonder Kitty. <laughs> that's just see, that's adorable. Mm -hmm. You know, there's never been a cuter name for a stray cat, I'm sure. And you're well, I call you Wonder Dream. It's Thank true. You. Can I tell you about uh, where the name came from? People ask that sometimes. Yeah. So the name uh, Wonder Root is. Um, very much about the sort of tension point between uh, having big dreams and ideas and aspirations and thinking about the future, um, but being both grounded and rooted in community as well as uh, structure. And so that's like Alex. Awesome. You didn't come up with that. The name? Yeah. Well, I'm not going to take credit <laughs> for the name that I came up with. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Alex um, West, our, our co-founder and board president and uh, best friend, recently married best friend. Super Alex recently got married, married. Like, married. Three days ago to Emily Ami of Emily Ami I know. Gallery. She's already changed her name on Facebook to... To Emily West. It's adorable. I think that she should name the gallery Emily Alex Gallery. But um, that wasn't my idea. That was Alex's idea, of course. <laughs> um, so anyway, a Alex talks about... Um, that part of, a lot of the power in Wonder Root is that the magic that happens um, in that tension between anarchy and structure that and that's what we feel like Wonder Root is is that sort of anarchy and structure and both are necessary for like change and revolution to happen. Revolution? Absolutely. Radical revolution. I mean that's what yes. we're talking about. We're not trying to perpetuate, you know, it's like a crusade. The status, the status quo. Well, you know, crusade has some, some religious connotation to Revolution's it. Revolution's so political. 
yeah, this is this is political work. Oh, well, mine's not religious. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought it sounded cute. <laughs> no, it's not political work. No. It's radical it's, work. It's radical. It's radical. Well, thanks for coming in. Wonder Imaginary Million. The Imaginary Million. The Imaginary Million next Wednesday. Wednesday, October 24th, 7 p.m., free and open to the public at 200 Peachtree, the old Macy's building downtown. All right. Thank you.